So to tell the world that this was such a toxic institution that was even racist, um, that they were bullies to Meghan and Harry and that they didn't feel welcome there, then to go name your child after Queen Elizabeth, the head of this institution that you have really tried to villainize to the entire world. Of all their alleged sins, this is the most heinous so far. There's another example of you disrespecting our monarch of 70 years, the amazing Elizabeth. You've done it again, guys. If these stories are true, it's another the tale of these two telling outright lies. No, oh, they can't help themselves, can they? They are just the, 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 the epitome of grifters. To do that after the Queen's husband had died, and that was his pet name, and to not have had permission is really, that's just, that is so rude, that is so thoughtless, that's, that's unkind. <laughs> Queen's fury after the Sussexes named their daughter Lily, but has been detailed. That was the child of nickname, which Meghan and Harry said she'd given her blessing to use. That royal biographer Robert Hardman says that's not true, and she was livid in a new book he's publishing called King Charles, New King, New Court. Can I just say, we will have Robert Hardman on this show on Thursday, but joining us now is the host to die for uh, Daily Podcast host, Kinsey Schofield, live from LA. Kins, morning, how are you? Oh, I can't wait to watch Thursday. That's a big scoop. Congratulations. Thank you. Um, I know they're in the gallery, they'll all go, uh, the old man worked for the, the royal family for 40 years, and I absolutely never believed for a moment that she'd given her blessing to use Lily, but I, I was waiting for this to happen. What does this book say about this? That's right. Hardman reports that the late Queen Elizabeth was, quote unquote, infuriated by the Sussexes claim that she had given her blessing for their youngest child to be named Lilibet. As you said, it was an intimate nickname given to her when she was just a little girl. One member of her staff says that Queen Elizabeth was as angry as Hyde ever seen her in response to Prince Harry's public insistence that the pair had her support. Uh, this esteemed royal author even claims that Harry and Meghan put pressure on the palace to publish publicly side with them uh, and the palace re refused to oblige they just weren't going to go along with that um also of note Hardman writes that despite Harry and Meghan legally threatening media outlets, including BBC, over false and you know, defamatory reports, that they never went through with that. So while Harry and Meghan were emailing the, through their attorneys, people like BBC threatening them with lawsuits over uh, this false and defamatory report that they didn't have the Queen's permission, nothing ever came to fruition. Kinsey, you wonder what actually went on here? What kind of conversations took place? Because it feels, from Harry and Meghan's perspective, such a mess to use the name without really the proper permission to then have their child caught up in this, this whole saga. What do you think they actually wanted? I'm wondering if the, the the initial phone call said, we're going to name our daughter after you, do you mind? And there weren't specifics about the name because as we know, Harry and Meghan are incredibly secretive. Um, I remember we, fo we found out that Archie was born hours after the uh, hours we we heard that he was in that she was in labor with Archie and then we found out she'd actually had him hours ago so they're so secretive when it comes to their children who we hardly ever see perhaps the initial phone call I don't, was kids, can I jump in I I don't have a problem with that actually I'm going to defend Harry and Meghan I don't have any problem with them being uh, private about their kids just go back to Elizabeth you're probably absolutely spot on they probably or she would have thought through advisors they were going to call the child Elizabeth do you know the origins of Lilibet? Do you know where it came from? Well, it was both Queen Elizabeth and Princess Margaret unable to pronounce her name. And so the family lovingly inherit, you know, inheriting that and it becoming that sweet inside joke that only her core were allowed to call and her. That's exactly why Prince I wanted Philip. you. It's exactly why I asked you that question. You're brilliant because it was that intimate and that private and that off the national grid. I absolutely guarantee she'd have gone nuts. There is no way. And then, of course, Rosie, it, it's fair enough to say there's another example of you disrespecting our monarch of 70 years, the amazing Elizabeth. You've done it again, guys, haven't you? You've, they do it all the time. A, a size 10 right in the middle of... It's just ludicrous to me. They never get it right. It it's hypocrisy because you can't tell us that this institution is toxic. You can't tell us because, you know, you, you, Queen Elizabeth was the leadership. 
And Queen Elizabeth was the, you know, the focal point of the family. She represented the family entirely. So to tell the world that this was such a toxic institution that was even racist, um, that they were bullies to Meghan and Harry and that they didn't feel welcome there, then to go name your child after Queen Elizabeth, the head of this institution that you have really tried to villainize to the entire world, it doesn't make sense to any ber any person that, you Please know, really agree. sits down and thinks about it. Kinsey, what we're seeing is language that we don't associate with the Queen at all. You know, the, the story says that Queen Elizabeth was livid. No, I, I completely agree with you. I was I, I thought to myself, I bet the only time I've ever seen her even remotely flustered was when a horse lost a race. I, I mean, I've never in real life, maybe she, I saw her devastating, de devastated over the reaction that the public had to her when Princess Diana died, but we rarely see her emotional at all so the idea that she was infuriated or that she was livid or are the, the most upset anyone has ever seen her um i think perhaps she felt a bit of betrayal after everything harry and megan had done up to that point so i think this is another one of those instances where uh, recollections may vary and i certainly do detect a bit of buckingham palace payback here uh, for the release exactly this time last year of uh, Prince Harry's ghost-written uh, autobiography, Spare. Um, let's just go back over the facts. In 2021, a beautiful baby girl was born in California. Uh, her parents, the Sussexes, uh, announced that her first name would be Lilibet, uh, which was a bit of a surprise because Lilibet isn't a name. It is what the queen, when she was an infant, called herself when she couldn't say the word Elizabeth. And it became a pet name, a very intimate, private pet name within the family, only used by the late queen's parents and her sister, and later by her husband, Prince Philip. Um, what happened then is that the BBC reported that permission had not been sought of the queen or given for the use of this very private name. Uh, the Sussexes then countered and said, of course, the name would not have been used had it not been supported by the Queen. Um, then libel letters went out, rather fierce ones, uh, from uh, a particularly active uh, libel law firm in, in London uh, to media organisations, including the BBC, asking them or telling them not to repeat uh, this allegation that the Queen had not given uh, permission for the name to be used. And when the incandescence came, when the fury came, uh, was when uh, the Sussex's spokesperson said that the Queen had given her blessing, because what appears to have happened is, the, yes, uh, Prince Harry, her grandson, rang up and told her that they wished to use the name Lilibet, and then the Queen felt rather... Um, shall we say, bounced into it. She was in a position where she couldn't say no. But blessing was the word which apparently uh, caused the uh, anger uh, by the late monarch. Let's, this uh, is Michael, very sorry, interesting. Michael, let's analyse this, you see, because I think uh, of all their alleged sins, this is the most heinous so far. This is, in essence, this is what is contained in Robert Hardman's book. And by the way, when we talk about Robert Hardman, we're not talking about some fly-by-night like Omid Scobie. He's a very reputable, respectable journalist. So we must treat what he says in his book with respect. So what he's saying, in effect, is these two lied about the Queen uh, giving her blessing to them calling uh, their kid after what was her childhood pet name and to those close to her remain till the day she died, the very, very closest to her. Uh, they're saying that she did not... Uh, she's saying that she did not give her blessing uh, and therefore... But, but they pursued, among others, the BBC and newspapers. They sent legal letters to newspapers saying, uh, let me, you know, you suggested that the Queen had not given her blessing. Well, this will result in legal action unless you take those stories down and you never repeat them. Well, they, they're just, like, making this stuff up as they go along and then trying to enshrine this lie in law with these legal letters. I mean, that is upping the ante from their p previous rather juvenile fibs, is it not? 
Uh, Kevin, you summarised it beautifully and colourfully as usual. And let me say that I first met Robert Hardman more than 40 years ago. And as you say, he's a very uh, successful, respectable and, and well-read uh, author and journalist. So I am very happy to believe what he said in his book. But what is interesting is that he was given tremendous backstage access to the coronation and all thing that went, things that went on during the year. And those courtiers who've spoken to him, and it seems to be courtiers rather than royal personalities, would not have said a dicky bird had not they been authorized to do so. So the fact that they've released this information now, yeah. as I said at the beginning, uh, was a bit of a payback here going on. Buckingham Palace, you know, they don't do things precipitously. They don't do things uh, rapidly. They don't do anything without thought. And they've uh, punctured uh, this uh, uh, story quite effectively. And I think that is probably payback for, or the beginning of payback, for Spare, uh, the uh, very uh, infamous, if you wish, or very famous, but certainly very successful and uh, and hugely selling autobiography of, of Prince Harry, which came out in January last year. So they're getting their 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 word in now, cool. and slowly, I think, uh, and steadily, uh, they will row back against some of the things that the Sussexes have said or allowed to be said on their behalf. Very clear that these two had no interest in having those children meet their great grandmother, no interest in building bridges with the royal family, getting around the Christmas dinner table. They just wanted to use that name for their own publicity to shore up their idea that they're still royals, that they're the Duke and Duchess, that they're very important, that they've got the Queen's backing, reminding everyone that their children have royal blood. I mean, come on, don't use your great granny's nickname if you're not even going to take the kids to visit great granny. Yeah, and if you're not going to ask her, they didn't ask her. Uh, she was shocked and uh, and furious about it. And then they tried to claim they did ask her. We'd have never done that without Her Majesty's permission. They didn't have, right. according to Robert Har Harman's book, they did not have that permission. So uh, if these stories are true, and as I say, I respect Robert Harman, we all should, great journalist. If these stories are true, it's another tale of these two telling outright lies. Well, oh, they can't help themselves, can they? They are just the, 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 the epitome of grifters. <laughs> Just very briefly, I want to talk about Lilibet. Uh, this is the daughter of uh, the Duke and Duchess of Sussex, Harry and Meghan, and a new book by Robert Harman, who we hope to be speaking to you later in the week, a uh, biography of King Charles. Uh, lots of revelations about you know, what happened on the day the Queen died and preparations and things, and the Prince Regents and all of this, but also the revelation that the, one of the uh, aides to the Queen said he had never seen her as angry as when uh, Harry and Meghan claimed that, that they'd been given permission and support from the Queen uh, to call their daughter Lilibet, which is, of course, the pet name that Prince Philip, who recently died, um, had for his wife, Queen Elizabeth. I mean, this this is... It's just... I mean, families go through these issues over names, mm. but I thought at the time it was a really bad decision of theirs. Yes, yeah, and I think um, it just shows, as you rightly say, the, you know, the, 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 uh, how divided that family has become and just how isolated, I think, uh, Harry and Meghan are um, uh, from the royal family, and I think it's... Uh, but also, it's... if they didn't have permission from the Queen, mm. they hadn't asked, like, look, are you okay, we'd like to contribute... Because you know that she just said no, also because it's a nickname, not a proper name, and therefore... I, it's weird anyway. It's, but... it's a personal thing. It's a very private thing, I think, amongst, obviously, for, for the Queen. So to, yeah, when think... your whole life is on display like that, to have that personal thing, yes. the, the, the nickname that your late husband of decades and decades had for you, mm. and then that name to be there on this child, who, by the way, I don't think she's ever met, has she? Has she ever met baby Lilibet? I don't think Lilibet's come to the UK. I, I'm not sure. No, perhaps not. Perhaps I don't think not. she ever had a chance before um... she died. So, I mean, you think... It's a bit rich, isn't it? It is, it is. And as you say, it's something that you would hold personally dear because it's a sort yeah. of a, a, a pet name behind, you mean, behind closed but doors. But I, I think it was a deliberate move by them to sort of say, oh, look, 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 but we've got this relationship with the Queen, it's tribute to the Queen. Yes, And yes. linking her with the Queen. I just, ugh! Yes. It it's so tacky. It's cringing and it's um, uh, awkward and uncomfortable yeah. and um, uh, I think they might also yeah. need to reflect on that. But again, again, to do that after the Queen's husband had died and that was his pet name and to not have had permission is really... That's just, that is so rude. That is so thoughtless. That's that's unkind. Mm. That's actually unkind, isn't it? To, be to an elderly... I mean, she was our queen, but she was also, at that point, an elderly widow. These these sort of um, snippets that we've received, uh, you take all of these absolutely as truth. I do. I, I, I'm absolutely nailed on about the Lilibet thing, aren't you? 
Yeah, I mean, Robert is extremely well connected, very well respected, and he manages to give us these insights without um, losing his contacts at the palace. You know, they still um, bring him in to write and uh, document a, a lot about their lives. So, yes, I, I take it absolutely. And yes, we learned that uh, the Queen was uh, very much not happy about uh, her great granddaughter being called Lilibet. The Sussexes seem to have landed themselves in it yet again uh, because they put it out when they decided that they were going to name the little girl Lilibet, that uh, the Queen had been supportive, or at least they put it the other way. They would not have gone ahead if the Queen had not been supportive. But Robert says, in fact, one of the senior staff at the palace have said they have never or rarely seen the Queen so angry as when she was told that this is what they wanted to call their little girl. Rather than ask, I think she, they were, uh, she was informed that this is where they wanted to go. No, she didn't like it. Yeah, Jenny, that the language that Robert uses is things like uh, the Queen was livid. We don't really hear her expressing kind of Not emo amused. emotions like that at all, do we? Uh, no, very rare. The only other occasion I can think of is uh, Sarah Ferguson, who said that uh, when she'd been found having her toes sucked topless in the south of France, as we all remember, and yes, the Queen uh, was told about it, she was livid on that occasion to, to Sarah's face. Uh, but otherwise, no, the Queen always kept it pretty zipped up, but it seems not on this occasion. But, Jenny, I think the important point, all jokes aside, is what I said a couple of hours ago. That name was shared between the sisters and the closest family, their family, because they both couldn't say Elizabeth when they were young. That was very, very poignant. She was very close to Margaret. And as you approach the end of your life, I mean, not we're going to know about it and some people will poo-poo it, but one wonders how much upset the Sussexes caused Her Majesty. But I, I said earlier, I, I think she had such respect from so many people that this tends to have more gravitas to it, this sort of story. It's not sort of viewed as Harry and Meghan bashing. I like what you said. It's, it's almost viewed like, you've done it again, haven't you, you couple of idiots? You just, you never miss the chance to put your foot in it. That's how I feel. Yeah, I think, uh, well, we learned from Robert uh, that uh, Charles is exasperated now by his younger son, that the door is still open to Harry, but he finds the whole situation exasperating and he's got other things to do. He's got a bigger job to do. Um, and I think I, I've been told that that's how the Queen felt. She just didn't want to know about their, their moaning and whining anymore. She just... Uh, is it something her mother was quite good at, the Queen Mother as well? They can... can quite easily, they could quite easily put their, their heads in the sand like ostriches and just get on with their life. And we're told that Charles, whilst not doing that, um, has learned to compartmentalise these domestic issues from the very big job that he has to do. So he just puts it one, on one side and gets on with it. Prince William, we're learning in this uh, book, decided to sort of take an approach of saying, maybe we use this as an opportunity for the four of us to go on a walkabout. We're kind of learning about... <clears throat> His motivations to do that, well, that was just after uh, the Queen had passed away. What was his motivation and what do you think it tells us about how he has tried to remedy things with Harry and Meghan? Well, I think he felt, and we did know this before, but Robert's put a bit of meat on the bones, that it was William who texted his younger brother on that day after the Queen had passed. And uh, they just thought, well, William thought, this is a time when we should be seen together. Um, Harry and Meghan are in this country. Uh, let's, let's go out and see the people, see the flowers. And it was his initiative. And it was apparently quite an awkward journey. They're all in the same car. Um, awkward journey there, awkward journey back, because there was a, a lot of bitterness between them. However, they did that to please the public, really. And we all thought, I thought perhaps this was the first step towards a reconciliation. We know now that that uh, didn't work. If that's what William had intended, and it would seem, you would think that was his, his intention, um, it really has not worked. In fact, things have just got worse.